Hey, hey, Ollie. How you doing? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Nice to meet you along last. Nice to meet you too. How's everything going? Oh, fantastic. You know, just got back from the gym, just had a coffee and a bagel, trying to keep up with your elite athletes. I'm past <laughs> it these days, but yeah. What about yourself? Where are you at the moment? I live in Dublin, so yep. uh, fairly busy times for me. I, uh, I'm lucky enough that I'll be leaving to, to Tokyo oh. on Wednesday. So uh, yeah, uh, it's a, a really kind of busy time, but one yeah. that's a really exciting one. So really just kind of enjoying as much as I can every minute of it. <laughs> Whilst you can. Have you, have you got many of these as well? Because I imagine these like media things just like clog up your schedule. Now you're, you know, like oh, no, a no, no. big dog. It's all, dog part, of, all uh... part of a fun and it's great to yeah. chat to people in general. You know what, after the last kind of year and a half, it's just nice to chat to people. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> so amazing. true. <laughs> so uh, true. Got so used to kind of being enclosed from everything. It's just nice to uh, go out and about. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So look, I appreciate you coming on. And, um, you know, as I said, like, it's going to be really great for people who are sort of sports science students and also just you know, me, uh, you know, I've got some experience in, in elite golf, but obviously you just sort of learn so many different things from different sports. So, I mean, it's really interesting to have a chat to you. Um, and uh, we're already recording because I was just like, I'll, I'll ping this on and get going. And the first question, which is probably the most important I want to ask you is, I know your sister, she's um, fantastic uh footballer fantastic at a job works with elite athletes there's you who uh obviously an olympic athlete you used to play for middlesbrough as well didn't you football oh yeah many years ago i uh, i really really miss playing football actually i think once i finish my diving i'll be straight onto the five a side or yeah. Sunday league football. Oh, I've been back nice into that. and then you've got two more siblings who are supposedly phenomenally talented and quite successful so you know who is the most talented dingley that's what i wanted to really ask well, it uh, certainly gets is... very competitive around Christmas time <laughs> when the board games start to appear. Uh, <laughs> who would, you know what? Uh, I, I don't know where to begin when it comes to my siblings. Uh, all of them are just so fantastic, hmm. so supportive. Uh, I'm just... You'd have to be nice, Ollie. Come on. You can be. Well, you know, I mean, they have the know. moments uh, <laughs> where, where we, we do have our arguments. But you know what? I'm very, very lucky. But I have three fantastic siblings who are just so supportive. And yeah, you know, through through my many times where I've, you know, in sports, there's there's many highs, but there's also many lows. Mm. And my siblings have always been there and been a part of my journey and you know, awesome. kept me going on many occasions. Yeah, awesome. Well, look, but let's, I mean, let's... I would probably be the most talented. That's absolutely. what I wanted to hear, really. That's all I wanted for, you know, just so we've got that on, on tape. I just wanted that for Emily. Um, but no, look, you know, we, we obviously you've got the Olympics coming up. So um, I think for people who maybe aren't so familiar with your event, um, you know, could you explain sort of, you know, what your event looks like in the Olympics? Um, yes, so I, and I talk about your journey there. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, I'm lucky enough to compete in the men's three meter springboard. So in individual diving, there are, there are two different heights. There's the three meter and the 10 meter. Now, 10 meter has quite, quite become quite a popular view and event over the last few years with Tom Daly being involved in sport. But also mm. the three meter event is extremely competitive. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's an event that is, is a very unforgiving event is diving. You have two seconds basically in the air to do a dive. Every single dive counts. If you miss a dive, then that's it. The competition is over. It could be a medal wow. gone. It could be a final or a semi-final. So it's a it's a sport where where high stakes really do come to play. So it takes a lot of kind of a lot of strength from a physicality point of view and also a mental point of view. So mm. three meter is obviously a springboard. So that's the board that can shoot you off in any direction. So I stand there on a, a metal plank, basically, that really can shoot you off in any direction, whereas the platform is concrete and that's 10 meters high. Uh, I personally get a bit too scared to do 10 meters. That's a bit too high for me. You look over the edge sometimes and you just think, why? But then I sometimes feel like that on three meter as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not low. <laughs> no, and we have to fit in lots of different somersaults. So, I mean, yeah. in my repertoire, I'll be doing up to front four and a half somersaults. To do wow. all of that in the air, I then go through the water with no splash. There's, there's lots to think about when, you, when you're yeah. spinning around trying to adjust your body. And this is something I'm a bit of a geeky biomechanist, so I want to get into this a little bit later on <laughs> around like, you know, takeoff versus, I suppose, like online corrections. Um, I'd be fascinated to get into that. And then so for the Olympics itself, you know, you, you said obviously one dive and it, it can be critical. But how many rounds are there where there's sort of eliminations? Um, yes. So there's six rounds in the men's, there's five rounds in the women's and uh, there will be 29 athletes of 29 of the best divers in the world 
be competing in the individual events. And when they knock it down to 18th place, goes top 18 go through to a semi-final. And then the top 12 make it through to the Olympic final. Amazing. That is superb. And then um, obviously your journey here over the last four years. So, um, you know, what the last year and a half has obviously been crazy, but, uh, you know, what, what's happened in the last four years in terms of your development as an athlete and what you've been doing to sort of, I suppose, prepare, you know, what's gone well in your eyes? I actually took the COVID uh, break really, really well. Yeah. Uh, I know, I mean, I'm in a very fortunate position where I've been able to carry on training, at least throughout the two lockdowns that we had in Ireland. First mm-hmm. lockdown, you know, the, the novelty of not doing anything was pretty good, but that, that didn't last any more longer than a month. And I, and I went through the stage of, you know, buying house plants after that and went on to Lego because then I realised I can't kill Lego like house plants. And, so, <laughs> and I managed to, you know, once the Olympics were postponed, I didn't take it too badly. I wasn't overly down about it. If anything, it just felt like it was another year to get better. Okay. And as an athlete, there's always things you can do to get better, yeah. especially in a technical sport like diving where the scoring is subjective. There's always something you can improve on. And so really, I found like it was a, it was a welcomed extra year in a way. Now, obviously, it's been challenging in other areas. I'm at university, uh, you know, for many people, some of my own family members included, in, uh, with, with work being put on hold uh, and obviously for some family members catching COVID, I've been lucky enough to, to kind of be okay for all of it. So it's really made me appreciate, and if anything, I've, I've really come out of the, the, the free lockdowns feeling really appreciative and right. it makes diving so much easier standing yeah. there because sometimes you, you, you do question why you do these things and, you know, standing there and then, you know, taking a step back and just thinking, oh, hang on a second, I am very lucky. It yeah. makes diving a lot easier. And, and I believe that makes a lot of things in life a lot easier as well. It's fascinating that you say that because uh, yeah, I have these conversations with people um, and that perspective, it can sort of do two things. I think some athletes, you know, they sort of have a child or something and all of a sudden they, they get better because it's, oh, well, you know, my sport doesn't matter that much because I've got these other bits and other people, it, it's sort of almost it's a struggle to keep up the same standard because, you know, these other commitments. So it's really interesting to hear that um, reflection, I suppose, on, on, you know, the last few years as well. Yeah, and, and I also, I'm at university as well. And, and I found since starting university, my diving also improved and I think that's because I have a, a good balance in life now whereas yeah. before I'd have been a full-time diver mm. and well your life revolves around diving whereas now I, I have something else there and and I've found that well just me as a person has probably improved because I've, I've had to have that balance but I found it transcend into my diving and my diving's improved because of that. So I think that's a really nice time to sort of jump into the next section, which is, you know, what do your weeks look like um, in terms of training? And I suppose trying to understand how, you know, S&C, biomechanics, nutrition, psychology, that it all fits in. So what's sort of like a standard training week in terms of volume? And then what does that look like in terms of sort of practice and, and, and stuff sort of out, out of the pool? So diving, obviously, there's a lot of hours involved. Now, the difference between diving to a lot of other sports is endurance isn't a key factor. So diving will be a very fast twitch sport. Like I said, the dive is over in in a second and a half, pretty much two seconds. So it's all about that power out of a board. So 50% of my training is actually in the gym. Wow. And the gym will compromise of trampolining, tumbling, conditioning, stretching, uh, floor work, uh, S&C. Now, I also do S&C additionally on top of that three times a week as well. Okay, right. And uh, and then the other fifty percent of my my diving time is is in the pool. So uh, it's a it's a very busy week. But in terms of some other sports, it's actually quite a forgiving schedule, because I mean we don't have to push our bodies to the very limits. Yeah. We also want to stay quite fresh in diving because you want to get that power out of the board. It, it makes it very, very hard if you've got jelly legs after a hard weight session trying to do all those somersaults. So it depends what time of season it is. Now, coming into competition, things do start to lighten up a bit because it's now starting to peak and, and you're looking for your, your peak performance. So you're not pushing your body to the extreme. You're kind of, in a way, perfecting everything. So you, you want to be more fresh for that. And then with that, what does the coaching look like? Because I imagine there's a period leading up where you're like, okay, let's develop these skills and these dives. And then there's a period where you're, you're getting up to the point where it's, well, just refine and keep everything in place. Yes. And that's where things like uh, video analy- analytics come in. Uh, yeah. 
uh, come into it. And we're very lucky in diving that after each dive, you'd be able to watch you dive back on a TiVo system that's on, on, on the wall. And within 20 seconds, you can watch back your dive. It's just on a on a rewind system. So, and we, we, have, the, we have the same in weights as well. And everything is kind of geared up to that, yeah, that optimal perfection. And that to get into that position, it doesn't just stem from things you do in the pool or in the gym. It also then kind of, what, what are you doing outside of the pool? I'm personally a terrible sleeper. So one thing right. I try and work on is, is trying to have better sleep. Uh, I've never been one for cooking either. Now I'm very, very lucky. And I, and I think Emily's probably a bit gutted here because dad's come over my, my, my father, <laughs> and uh, he's been whipping me up some fantastic meals. Whereas uh, I think Emily's probably used to going home and nabbing the, I mean, I'm sure she's going home and taking many frozen meals from the freezer. But, uh, <laughs> you've got a full-time chef on hand now. I, I do. I, I, it's I, when you know you've made it. <laughs> I really do. And it's, and it's made the world of difference for me. Yeah. Uh, going into well he came over from my olympic qualifying event which was the world cup which was in uh i'm losing track of months but i think it was in june and my dad came over for that and uh and it got got me in tip-top shape with the diet then as well and you really do start to see those small gains and also and recovery after sessions whether it's your your recovery drinks or some form of protein yeah. I, I do have a nutritionist and we'll we'll delve into to every minor detail that can help you get that just that extra bit of recovery because that will then help you the next day in the pool yeah particularly at your levels i mean it's, it's finding these sort of one percent gains and if you can add up you know 10 different little gains they can really you know optimize your performance i suppose so you have say nutritionists that you work with um you obviously have a, a diving coach as well um uh you i'm guessing you have someone to lead the snc sessions do, is, yes. is there anyone else that you work with in terms of sort of psychology or i don't know data or or other areas was that the the core team yes yeah, so, so, so data not so much i mean it's something we probably could do more of but at the same time right now it isn't going to do much else we, we, sometimes we'll we'll have videos where we compare my dives to other divers and we especially another diver who's good at a, a particular skill I mean, kind of mirror my diving towards that. But that's, that type of stuff is sometimes a bit more few and far between. I do <clears throat> watch myself after every dive. But when it comes to the data, we get a lot of data actually in S&C. So in S&C, you can work to, to learn to jump higher, for example. Uh, we, we use so many different tools and equipment. I'm very, very lucky. I've also got a physio. But yes, uh, amazing a nutritionist, but also psychology. That's a yeah. real key in diving because it's such a, an unforgiving sport sometimes. I'm not selling it very well there, am I? So well, no, you are. You know, this is it. I think people, um, you know, view elite sport as this sort of glamorous life. And as you said earlier, it's, it's super fortunate to be there. But people don't see the 99% of the time when no one's watching you know and what goes into that so i mean i will leave psychology because i really that's the last point i want to get on to sort of moving forward and under pressure and some of those other things but i think the the last thing i want to get on to before we get up to sort of the next few weeks and, and how you're preparing is in your mind and i've asked this to uh, a few different sports people and i'm always interested in people's answers it is to it's a personal perspective but what's the difference between um sub elite elite and then world class in your sport what what do you think sort of separates them okay. so i don't actually know what sub elite means but i'll take a i'll take a wild guess let's go sort um, of national international gold medal winner okay yeah. uh, well oof, where to start now <laughs> it's not like diving and this is why i think the chinese may get a clean sweep in diving right in the Olympic games and it's consistency now you can be now i've personally never seen myself as the world's best diver but what i suppose makes me you're doing all right ollie thank you <laughs> what, what, what makes me kind of be up there with with the other divers i work very very hard and, and i'm very very invested in what i do and, and i really try and push myself at extra little bits so talent's one thing uh, and then hard work is another but if in a sport like diving if you can then combine that with consistency now the Olympic Games back in 2016, uh, I finished in eighth place. So, so my first Olympics and I was lucky enough to make an Olympic final. Now, the I was actually following the Olympic champion from uh, London 2012 in the, in the prelim. He finished 18th overall. Right. The world champion from 2015 finished 23rd, I think. Wow. So it's a sport, like I said, if you miss one dive, then you're out. But if you can, yeah. you can do those really, really hard dives, but do them consistently well 
that's going to make you stand out from everyone else because you are in a competition, you are going to go slightly over, slightly short. But if for those divers who, you know, you can, you can stand there and you can channel it into that kind of tunnel vision and you can just perform at that one moment, that one moment in time, you're going to be very high up in the rankings. And, right. you know, I, I always see it like everyone's kind of dealt the same cards in a competition. You've all kind of got the same surroundings. You're in the same environment. In Rio, for example, it was outdoor diving. So that's very different to, for a lot of divers. But we all were dealt those cards. So it's really who can use those cards the most effectively. And that's what makes a world-class diver. Right. Okay. So it's just trying to find that level of consistency and I suppose preparing for that over the, you know, three, four year run up to the event. Um, so let's see, let's go. So you, you're obviously sort of, it's going to be a bit of a weird few weeks anyway. I suppose you don't know what's going up, but the coming weeks leading up to your event, um, you know, what's the goals, what's your focus, what's some of the challenges and what's some of the unknowns that you've got coming up? So I don't really have many goals going ahead into uh, into the Olympics, apart from really just going to my best possible performance and taking it one dive at a time. If I start to look too far ahead to the future and I start to get too excited or or just just too energetic, I, that's when I start to, to find that my performances seem to drop because I'll then start to think about medals. Right. Now it's all about in diving is one dive at a time. If you do one dive, you do a good dive, you do a bad dive, you do a great dive, you forget about it. You move on to the next round. You can't go back in time. You can't change that. So you, you're on to the next. And there's a part of me which really wants to dwell on whatever I did in that last dive. But if you can then zone in onto that next dive, it makes competing yeah. a lot easier. If you can kind of just stay in the present, not think about the past or the future. So, so, so it's very sort of process focused. It's every day wake up, right? Here's my training. Here's this, here's yeah. that. And it's staying in the moment is, is a big part. that's really how I want my my Tokyo experience to be right. kind of not getting too carried away with everything just taking it methodically one day at a time and that way you know I can I can only do what I can do at that moment in time mm. and uh, and I know if I do the right thing at that moment in time then it should look good further down the line so it's going to be you know and it's, it's an exciting period oh. we're off to the Olympic Games uh, well as long as all my Covid tests come back <laughs> Hey, and God, fingers crossed. Do, it's, uh, yeah. it's a very dangerous world at the moment. Uh, mm. I've, like I said, I've been one of the lucky ones who's been able to, to get through it unscathed, but I touch wood, I do carry on to and, you know, live that Olympic experience. It's going to be a different Olympic experience, but, you know, just being in a village with the world's best athletes. Oh, amazing. Uh, what a place to be. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed going into Rio was, was going to the SNC area at the Olympic Village. I'd be warming up next to a, I don't know, a Georgian weightlifter, for example. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. His, his warm up was, you know, 10 times harder than my main sets. It was, you know, just absolutely phenomenal to see all these different sports, these different body shapes, different people from different cultures all kind of come together and just be a, around that is uh you know it's a, it's a truly magical thing that not many people get to to witness that is superb i'm, I'm you know i'm sure it'll be an incredible just uh, experience mm -hmm. um so let it, i'm gonna be mindful of your time so just get on to the last section um which again digs into this psychology because i think it's fascinating a sport like diving as you've said um so you know but well the, the keys to performing well under pressure so you've already sort of said that staying in the moment is a big part is the decision making of sort of, um, you know, what you're planning to do in your next dive, is that all taken care of? Or, or is that something you've got to manage dive to dive in terms of making sort of updates? So th there are tactics involved. Mm. Uh, if, if I go back to Rio, for example, because Rio is a good one, uh, uh, a good example, because it was outdoor diving. And so add outdoor diving, which... The diving was actually, it carried on despite the sailing being cancelled that way because it was so windy. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, add that or something like that factor into it. Now, you have to submit your dive list 24 hours before uh, before the competition starts. Right. You're only allowed to change your dives then if you make it into the semi-final, say, and you have, you have half an hour to do that. And then same after the semi-final, before the final, you have half an hour. Crikey. Okay final finishes to change your dives now in Rio I opted for a more safer dive list where I was doing easier dives 
Now, problem with that is the degree of difficulty isn't as, as high as some of the other divers. Now, their problem though, the other divers are doing the harder dives, the bigger the, re bigger the risk, possibly bigger the reward. But you can imagine trying to do a Ford four and a half somersaults with wind battering you from the side. <laughs> Uh, blue sky and blue water you know it just kind of adds those extra that extra those extra stresses that can sometimes really take it out on you and for some divers they got through it and got through into the next round other divers it was a bit too much and then you had me was uh, i'm going to do a simpler dive list but i'll set down that market marker and good luck to everyone else trying to beat that nice so i did the more simple yeah. dives but i did them very well and very consistently and you know that puts the marker down and if they beat me fair play they Amazing. took the risk and they got the reward uh, but also it's very hard to do that as well so i think that's on the decision making side and then the other side which sort of interests me um is i suppose anxiety and arousal because your performance is really dictated on as you said that force production when you leave the board yes. and obviously more arousal or more force but can you control it so what is it for you? Do you sort of enjoy that feeling? You know, I'm excited, I'm pumped, I'm ready to go. Or do you try and sort of manage it and, and calm yourself down uh, for those big moments? It's very hard in diving to find that balance. And I've been in the sport for over 20 years. And I still have my days where I find that really, really hard. Sometimes the anxiety gets too much and you can't control your knees, for example, because they're shaking so much. Other times you stand there and you think, this is amazing. And, you know, getting to walk out into an arena like in an Olympic final of packed out stadium, uh, you've got millions of people watching it on the TV, you know, trying to then dial that down into that tunnel vision is a challenging process. But one, you know, you know what, nothing can ever really prepare you for an Olympic Games. You know, you go <laughs> through all these through these webinars and you have all these meetings where people tell you what you're going to experience it's going to be like this and it's not going to be like this and you sometimes get a bit of a negative picture around it but standing there on the diving board nothing can ever replicate that and just how amazing but how intense it is to mm. stand there at an olympic games on a diving board and i suppose you you design what that experience is you're the only one there experiencing yeah. it so you it's down really to you. have your own destiny and your own hands in elite level mm. sport all of the time now you can't control what your other competitors are doing they might dive better on the day. They might dive worse on the day. You can only do what you can do. So I, I you know, I, I do so many different cognitive techniques, whether it's counting down from 100 by five or I'll be tapping certain parts of my body uh, when I'm stood there on a the diving board just before the whistle blows, just to try and calm myself down and get that breathing into into motion which is a, a good level of breathing and not kind of hyperventilating. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's a, it's an intense sport. It could be a very lonely sport when you stood there, uh, you're, you're on a diving board all by yourself. And, but you know what, it's one hell of a sport. And if yeah. it goes right, it's, it's an amazing feeling once you hit that water and you've done a good dive. I was going to say, it's an amazing feeling when you've gone up into the air and you're like, <laughs> dives do, and then you don't want to get too carried away. Because sometimes you think, oh, you're too busy kind of congratulating yourself and how well you're doing spinning through the air. Like, well, oh, that takeoff was great. And then you forget about the rest of your dive and then you go flying over. So it's, <laughs> you know, it's bringing that focus in. And, and like I said in earlier with the dives, sorry, with the rounds, it's one step at a time. Yeah. Same for in the air. It's one little point at a time. Now, my brain and body will take over most of the work once I'm in the air. Kind of, even if it's through uh, kind of just repetition, repetition drilling into my head or the body with sheer panic. The body is an amazing thing and it will figure out what to do in the air. But I just kind of focus on, say, three points kind of those three points that I might be most anxious about. You know, you can use those nerves to your ability to make you more aware of the things you need to do to be better. Mm. So I use those three points in the air. It could be takeoff. It could be the come out and it could, the final one's usually squeeze as I'm just going through the water, trying to, to be as tight as I possibly can. Nice. It's kind of, yeah, a dive itself is a process of one step at a time, but those steps are literally microseconds. That's fascinating. Very interesting to hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and interesting comparisons across other sports because you have all of this, I suppose, self-talk and, as you say, focusing the conscious mind on something useful, whereas your subconscious, which really controls all of our movement, is, is like a supercomputer. And you almost just want to get out the way of it 
and, and let it you know control movement so i mean yeah it's always it's interesting to hear that's exactly the same in diving but ali it's been amazing it's been really good just to dive in and um, get your insight to this so thank you so so much it's been great to meet you oh yeah great great to meet at last i've heard lots about you so i mean you know great to see you at long last maybe maybe in person one day post olympics we'll see um but yeah thank you so much all the best um with the next few weeks and enjoy it i'm sure you will uh, over there and yeah hopefully have a catch up in the future but, thank you you're very kind take care thank you very much yes cheers, cheers